Once again, we must defeat a war on freedom by William R. Collier Jr. We must make a fresh determination in our hearts, as did the men and women in World War II, to fight to defend freedom. We do this by defending and advancing what makes America good and defeating the ongoing war on America's goodness. This is a war on freedom by today's version of the Axis powers, the woke communists. Freedom is rooted in goodness. Take away goodness and freedom is reduced to libertine license and animalistic savagery. America's freedom stands on our goodness. This is why we say that a war on America's goodness as the line of attack against freedom by the new axis of work, communists. Let's begin by asking, what makes America good? It's not what you think. And if you get this right, you understand what is truly at stake is the very existence of our country. If you get this wrong, you become distracted and fight meaningless battles that won't change the outcome of this war on freedom. Trump's slogan remains, make America great again, MAGA. But the word great implies our military power, wealth, our economic clout and standing compared to the world. On the contrary, when we focus on how America is good, we get a different feeling in two ways. First, we aren't trying to make America good, it is good. Second, we aren't necessarily trying to compare America to other countries or imply that only we can be good. So many people support Trump because whatever else is said about him, they deeply believe he loves America as America, not as some weird globalized hybrid devoid of our heritage. Whatever the truth behind the myth, the people following Trump are generally drawn to him because they inwardly feel that which is the essence of America is under siege. The war on America's goodness, both in denying it as a real thing and in attacking its historical moral orthodoxy, is all too common among the new axis of woke communists, right and left, who occupy places of power in both political parties and every major institution. America is not good because we have wealth or military might. We are not good because we are great compared to other countries. America is also not good because we unhypocritically adhere our stated ideals and values across the board. These things are not the source of our goodness. America is good because the foundational ideal is create an arc of history toward a free and pluralistic society. This is a vision predicated on God's standards of righteousness and justice. America fulfilled in its ideals is a society made up of spiritually sovereign human beings created in the image of God. It may be that these ideals, as some rightly explain, are violated in practice, but they are real and they are good. The social, cultural, and spiritual heritage, constitution, as in our spiritual constitution, and true manifest destiny of America as a free and pluralistic society of equals is what makes America good. If America chooses to betray and turn its back on its innate goodness out of some deconstructionist peak about how we haven't yet fulfilled our ideals and our potential, then America will not only cease to be great, it will cease to be America. America is great because America is good. And if America ceases to be good, it ceases to be great. This was the sentiment of Alex de Tocqueville and many of America's foundational thinkers and builders, even Thomas Jefferson despite hypocritically owning slaves, could not deny that all men as in all humans are created equal. The sentiment and truth may have escaped him in practice, but his essential veracity cannot be denied and should never be denied. Take the notion of manifest destiny. It was warped into an imperialistic lust for lands and colonies in the late 19th century, but setting aside such a notion, which doesn't fit our spiritual constitution, the idea of a manifest destiny for individuals or for this country is a sound idea. America's manifest destiny isn't land or power, as was presented in the late 19th century. It is the fulfillment of our goodness as a free and pluralistic society of equals. And to fulfill that manifest destiny, we must ever resort to and use America's goodness as our guide. This goodness is found in our virtues and ideals, our values and our convictions. 
It is a benchmark and guide for everything from personal conduct and free enterprise to policy and law. There are those who are at war with America's goodness because at the core, they are waging war on freedom itself. Some call them woke communists, as in new, a new form of communism, which employs private and public institutions and uses the woke cancel culture to suppress opposition. Their favorite tactic is deconstruction. Deconstruction involves inflating every sin using guilt by association in the extreme, ignoring anything good about America, and removing the ancient landmarks of right and wrong. It is insidious in its purpose, and it is to pave the way for an essentially unjust system of top-down and centralized micromanagement of your life. The goal is totalitarianism of some kind. America's goodness is more than a foundation for our alleged greatness. Who cares how great we are if we are not good? A great society that isn't good is only beneficial for the few at the expense of the many. In utilizing our virtues and moral foundations to guide behavioral expectations, public life, and law, and in being led by the essentials of our goodness, we achieve goodness that benefits all, excluding none. Goodness is its own reward. It is not just something that gets us something else. Goodness will generate some form of greatness, but this is the effect, not a goal. Goodness generates freedom and prosperity. It creates a just society that is also pluralistic, and it establishes prosperity as the norm. Don't let anyone con you into thinking our goodness isn't real, isn't worth defending, and it's essential for our survival as a free country. The battle to save and then advance America's goodness to new heights of fulfillment is a spiritual and then social cultural battle as well, albeit secondarily an economic and then a political battle. The aim is to both defeat the combined agents of a new form of woke communism and to impart and promote America's goodness as something practiced by individuals and their free associations, as well as in our public life, policy, and laws. Our aim should not merely be to hold back a further advance of the axis of woke communists and their allies, both right and left, our aim must be to expose, confront, and defeat efforts by the woke communists to wage war on America's goodness. As we freedomists see it, America's true manifest destiny, from the perspective of our Judeo-Christian roots, is threefold. One, to become a decentralized empire of freedom through virtue, liberty, and independence, with maximum individual and local empowerment according to God's standards of righteousness and justice. Two, to become the cradle of a new civilization founded on shared values and convictions based on our Judeo-Christian roots and worldwide and our core ideals. Three, to fulfill our spiritual constitution based on a balanced application and Judeo-Christian interpretation of the four core ideals of the new civilization, namely unity and diversity, popular sovereignty, democratic equality, and rule of law. In such a free and pluralistic society, even those whose personal beliefs are neither Jewish nor Christian find a place of liberty and justice that accepts and loves them on the basis of our shared human dignity. But, we assert, without a Judeo-Christian worldview, America's goodness is untenable and will disappear, and so too will America and the freedom that she represents. Though individuals should be free to choose, it does not stand to reason that things like the accepted social cultural norms, public life, policy, or law should be turned against those who adore and seek to emulate and propagate America's goodness. And indeed, we also assert America's goodness, founded on our Judeo-Christian worldview, should be favored, even though tolerance for those whose beliefs and practices differ is also essential to our goodness. In other words, while law should favor the familial unit based on our Judeo-Christian moral foundations, it doesn't have to compel all to follow such a view of family. The fact, the essence of America's goodness, which has deep roots in marriage and the family according to thousands of years of historic Christian and Jewish orthodoxy, is being positively demonized by every major institution, public and private, is alarming. This is just one example of the woke communist war on America's goodness. The net effect is not the advancement of the rights of those whose views on such matters are outside this historic orthodoxy, but rather it is the reducing of the rights of the majority to both practice their lifestyle in peace and promote and propagate it as the best approach to marriage and family. 
The war to defeat the woke communist and the war on America's goodness is essentially spiritual and social cultural. The economic and civic aspects of the fight being more important, but not core, we must create and build social cultural bonds and associations rooted in our spiritual heritage, which is the Judeo Christian moral orthodoxy, without apology or compromise, and on the basis of free will participation. We support any and all efforts by people to form free will participatory associations on any basis, provided the essentials of liberty as defined by the original spirit and intent of the U.S. Bill of Rights are respected. But our focus and aim is on building such free will participatory association on the basis of what we see as the foundation of America's goodness, our historic Judeo-Christian moral and ethical orthodoxy, which to us remains relevant both to our present needs and future advancement. America's goodness is under assault by unscrupulous purveyors of a woke communism that employs public and private institutions to micromanage your life. They, the woke communists, want to deconstruct our goodness on frivolous grounds without, of course, explaining that their alternative is far, far worse than anything our country has allegedly done in violating our standards of goodness. No country, including ours, will perfectly fulfill its core goodness if it has such a core for everyone all the time. But the woke communists desire to use the excuse of our past and present failures to live up to our goodness as an indictment of our goodness so that instead of moving towards fulfilling our goodness for more and more people most all the time, we fulfill it less and less for almost all the people almost all the time. Defeating the Axis in World War II took a massive mobilization. Defeating the Axis of woke communists today will require a similar mobilization of citizen activists to soar above the lives and build freedom together. The relentless assault on America's goodness by the axis of woke communism is regressive and barbaric. Their alternative, which they refuse to candidly admit, is an atomized society of nameless, undifferentiated cogs in their machine who are told exactly how to think and act on pain of being canceled right out of existence. Such a hellscape version of Tomorrowland for this country would spell the literal end of America without forcing anyone to fit into our mold, but asserting our own shared rights of self-preservation and self-determination, our goal is to promote and impart America's goodness and to work to see our true and deeper manifest destiny as a free and pluralistic society of equals become more and more fulfilled in our lives, association, community, and our whole country. In World War II, our brave men and women didn't fight the Axis powers only to watch America fall prey to the new axis of a woke communist authoritarianism. They fought to defend and advance America's goodness. We freedomists will stand in that noble tradition. Anyone who vilifies us or smears us over this or who, who tries to make our lives harder simply because they cannot abide us being happy as we define happiness is a totalitarian and a morally backwards barbarian human being. Our rights to be and pursue as well as proclaim and seek legal protection for a life lived by the guidance of America's goodness should never be interfered with by any person or by any public or private entity, be it corporate or state. Efforts to cancel people or punish people because they pursue America's goodness are unacceptable and intolerable. Together as freedom is to love America, we will expose the war on America's goodness, we will defeat the war on freedom, we will peacefully overthrow the woke communist, and we will strive to find practical ways to live out our values and convictions in peace. The Axis, the woke communist and their allies in every major U.S. institution may seem formidable and mighty, like Britain facing the Axis in June of 1940. But we will awaken the sleeping giant and then the tide on these barbarous hordes will be turned. Please consider subscribing to The Freedomists so we can create content and build a network of freedomists who will fight to preserve and advance America's goodness and defeat the world communist and the war on freedom. Go to freedomist.com now and subscribe.